every single one of those disciples and even more after that they died for the statement that Jesus is the son of God some were sown asunder some were crucified upside down some were stoned to death for the statement that Jesus is the son of God praise the Lord Jesus is the son of God Jesus Christ He is the Son of God. I don't think that the twelve apostles would willingly die for something they knew to be a lie. Because every single one of them died for this statement that Jesus is the Son of God. Every single one of them. Some were sown asunder. Some were crucified upside down. Some were stoned to death. Some were thrown to the lions. But every single one of them never retracted the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. They were willing to die for it. And they did die for it. Roman Empire persecuted a lot of Christians. They would throw them into stadiums with lions and watch the lions devour the Christians for their entertainment and amusement. The only way you could get out of it is if you retracted the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. to retract the statement that Jesus is the Son of God, he will free to go. But thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians died under the Roman Empire persecution because they would not retract the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. And I can tell you one thing. I will never retract the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. Come what may, I will never retract the statement that Jesus is the Son of the living God. I will never do that. Even if it means my life, find me denouncing that Jesus is the Son of God. I will gladly follow the footsteps of the apostles. I will gladly follow the example. If this was to be brought to court, to the courts of law, they have a respect, they have a healthy respect for first-hand witnesses. If there's an investigation, let's say there's a homicide investigation, there's a murder investigation, ah, There's a murder investigation. Let's say the police have found the body. The first point of contact is the last person to see that person alive. The last telephone number called. They begin to piece the, 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 piece, piece the, the picture from, from that. They appeal for 
for witnesses. If anybody saw what happened, the courts of law have a healthy respect for first hand witnesses. And we have the apostles of Jesus Christ, they gave us their accounts. Matthew gave us his account that Jesus Christ died and rose again. That's where Mark ends his gospel. That's where, that's where he, he emphasizes his gospel in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Mark also gave us his witness that after Jesus had died and was risen from the dead, he was received up into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of God. Luke also gave us his witness that Jesus is the one who gives the Holy Spirit. And John also gave us his witness that Jesus Christ will return to rapture the church and to judge the world. The courts of law have a healthy respect for first-hand witness. So what's the matter with you? Why is it that you refuse to accept and respect the first-hand witness of Lucifer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What about you? What's going on here? If this was to go to the courts of law, they would call the first the first, the, the, the first hand witness. Let's hear it from the people that lived with Jesus. The courts of law has a respect for first hand witness. Let's hear it from the people that lived with Jesus. They will call Matthew to the stand. They will call Mark to the stand. They will call Luke to the stand. And they will call John to the stand. They will call Peter to the stand. They will call Paul to the stand. They will call Stephen to the stand. They will call Barnabas to the stand. The people that lived also in the time of Jesus. The courts of law have a healthy respect for first-hand witnesses. So let's hear it from the people that walked and talked to Jesus. Let's hear it from the people that lived with Jesus. The people that traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem back and forth with Jesus. The people that attended the feast in, uh, there in Jerusalem together with Jesus. Let's hear it from them. The courts of law have a healthy respect for first-hand witness. Any witness 600 years after the event will be laughed out of the courts of law. I'll tell you about that right now. Any witness so-called witness who was it you weren't even there when jesus was healing the sick you weren't even there when jesus christ was opening blind eyes So listen, that's my trolley. So listen, you said you're not you're not going to church, yeah? Yeah, I'm not going to church. So are you not going to church with the man tomorrow? I think so. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to try, try that. Try, 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 try that. Try that. Try that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Try that, yeah? You weren't even there when Jesus was raising the dead. So as a witness, you don't qualify. If you were not there when Jesus was walking on the water, you don't qualify as a witness. That would be laughed out of court. If you weren't there when Jesus was raising that 12 year old girl from the dead, you don't qualify as a witness. I'm going to ask the question again what's wrong with people today? Because I know that the courts of law have a healthy respect for first hand witness. So why is it that we want to dismiss the witness of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? What's wrong with you? The people that walk to Jesus says that Jesus is the Son of God. that talked to Jesus, his disciples, the people that were in ministry with him, the people that were preaching with him, the ones to whom Jesus gave the bread to give to the people, because the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, looked up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the people and fed the 5,000, but he gave the bread to the disciples and the disciples gave it to the people. Those disciples say that Jesus said, I am the Son of God. Anybody who rejects the testimony of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John has no respect at all for, for the Lord the law of first-hand first witness. If I want to know about you, I can ask your family members about you, and your family members can tell me that you're a loving dad from the kid's point of view. They can tell me that, you know, you're either a loving husband or a loving wife. Can make those statements because they've witnessed it, they've seen you, they live with you, they eat with you, so they can tell you, they can tell me that. If I want to know about you, I will ask your family members about you, and we know who's for we know who, for Jesus' family. Jesus said. These ones who are doing the will of my father are my mother, my brother, and my sister. So if we ever need to know anything about Jesus, we go to his family, the disciples. Do you really think that Jesus would come on earth for a good 33 years? And leave the earth without making it clear who he is and what he came to do. If you were not there when Jesus was raising the dead, you don't qualify as a witness. You you have no right to tell the people to tell the world who Jesus is. Leave it to the people that lived with him. not present when Jesus was commanding the grave to release Lazarus after four days burial if you weren't present at that time you are not qualified as a witness you're not qualified leave it to the people who were present leave it to the people 
people that walk the talk with Jesus. Let them tell us what Jesus said because they had it from him. Anybody who comes on the scene later, I don't care who the guy, you don't qualify as a witness because you weren't there. to be present for you to come forward as a witness you have to be present for you to say oh yes Jesus Christ is the son of God because we had him say it with his own mouth because that's one thing that Jesus made clear that he is the son of God. No doubt. Jesus to court. So the high priest stood up in the midst and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer any of these things that they are witnessing against you? But Jesus never said anything. Again, the high priest said to Jesus, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? Jesus Christ said, I am. There's nothing confusing about that. The high priest put a question to Jesus and said, Jesus, you are under wolf. Are you the son of God? And Jesus said, son of God. There's no confusion there. Straightforward. There's no confusion. You might interpret it how you want to interpret the thing. You are right. Good, good. You can interpret it however you want to interpret it. But this is a very simple conversation. Very, very simple. The high priest is asking Jesus a question. Are you the son of God? And Jesus answers the question and says, I am. So where is the confusion? Where are you tripping? Where are you tripping? Jesus was asked a question by the high priest. Are you the son of God? And Jesus said, I am the son of God. Well, that's what Jesus said. Now what you want to say, say on. You're entitled to your opinion because you see, what I think about you doesn't matter. But what you say about yourself is what matters. What the next guy thinks or says about you doesn't matter. What matters is what you say about yourself. So when they put Jesus to court, and they dropped him before, before the leaders, and they put the question to Jesus, they said, Jesus, tell us, are you the Messiah? Are you the son of the blessed? Are you the son of God? Jesus said, I am the son of God. I am the son of God. Not only did he say that, he also said that. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power 
people coming in the clouds of heaven. So Jesus is saying, listen, I am the son of God. And not only that, but I'm going to go to heaven and return. You will see me and every eye will see me. So where are you tripping? The man said it with his own mouth that he is the son of God. And I know you're going to say the Bible was changed. So again, I say to you, if the Bible is changed, tell me what it said before the change. Tell me where the changes were made and tell me what it says after the change. They can tell me anything. But they like to say, oh, the Bible was changed. They like to mischievously postulate that the Bible was changed and yet they cannot tell me where the changes were made. I find that a little bit appalling. If the Bible was changed, tell me what it said before the change, show me where the changes were made and tell me what it said after the change. the other day, usually man at the Friday, 5.30, you can't miss me. I dare you to bring me the answer. I dare you. If the Bible was changed, tell me what it said before the change. Tell me where the changes were made. Tell me what it said after the change. So dare you to put that question to anyone who states that the Bible was changed. If you're looking for the truth, if you are an honest person, you should be asking that question. But otherwise, if you want to accept that statement without any evidence, just so that it can um, fit your ideology or what you already believe, then that's on you. But if you have any respect for the truth, if you have any respect for the truth, anybody who says the Bible has changed, ask them this question. What? did it say before the change where were the changes made and what did it say after the change <laughs>